As Muslims worldwide celebrate the festival of sacrifice, President Bar Jagdi urged those here to commit their hope in a prayer to affirm the unity between Islam and other religions. Now the president is among 16 CARICOM leaders in Havana for the third CARICOM Cuba summit, placing heavy emphasis on the financial, energy and food crises. And the picturesque sight of masqueraders outside of the botanical gardens ushers in the Christmas season. And of course, the latest sporting action in the Diamond Mineral Water and NCN Sports News. Good evening, I am Janelle Persaud. And I'm Paul Moore. With this half hour edition of the 6 o'clock news for today, Monday, December 8, 2008. Paul. Thanks, Janelle. President Barr Jagdu is among 16 CARICOM leaders in Havana for the third CARICOM Cuba Summit, which placed heavy emphasis on the financial, energy, and food crises in the region and the world. The summit coincides with the Cuba CARICOM Day and has also seen discussions on the current U.S. embargo on the Caribbean island. Edward Lane reports. President Raul Castro and other government officials in Havana for a new round of cooperation talks aimed at strengthening their relationship and finding regional solutions to common problems. The impact of the global economic and social crisis, which has been marked by high energy and food prices, Problems of environmental degradation and downturn of major financial centers highlight the agenda. In addition to the discussions, regional solution to these challenges, the leaders are also expected to propose topics for discussions at the Summit on Integration and Development, which is scheduled for December 16 and 17 in Brazil. Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister Patrick Manning says CARICOM countries enjoy a very good relationship with Cuba, to which they conceded great importance. Manning told reporters ahead of the summit that the region is hopeful that during this summit they will be able to strengthen this relationship even more. On Sunday last, 14 CARICOM heads joined President Raul Castro in a tribute to national hero Jose Marti and Cuba's greatest general during the War of Independence from Spain, Antonio Macio, the Secretary General of CARICOM, the Association of Carbon States and the Organization of Eastern Carbon States also attended the meeting. Guyana is represented by President Bahar Jagdio, who is also expected to meet with Guyanese students studying in a third country. Cuba CARICOM relations dates back to the 8th of December 1972, when Barbados, Guyana, Jamaica, and Trinidad and Tobago established diplomatic relations with that country. Edward Lane, the 6 o'clock news. Well, President Bar Jagdia says it is time for the world to acknowledge the importance of standing forests in the fight against climate change. The Guyanese leader will be heading for Poland tomorrow, where he plans to champion this cause at the United Nations Climate Change Convention. He will also be presenting a comprehensive report which was conducted to determine the feasibility of this initiative in Guyana. More in this Shardalau report. President Bar Jagdio first revealed his carbon-based mechanism initiative at a Commonwealth Finance Minister's meeting last year. Since then, the Guyanese leader has been traveling throughout the world advocating the importance of standing forests to battle global environmental threats. And with only a few days away from the UN Climate Change Convention in Poland, President Jagdio has delivered a comprehensive market model to stakeholders. He says global temperatures have increased significantly, causing severe damage to many sectors and will continue to do so unless action is taken to have the situation stabilized. The head of state notes government is working to align the economic importance of standing forests with the interests of the international community and national development. We have long recognized that proposals to simply slow down deforestation in countries where it is already taking place through the use of historical baselines do not take into account the true economic pressures on the forest and will not help countries like ours which have low historic rates of deforestation. 
based on a comprehensive analysis of Guyana's standing forests, it has been revealed that the country could earn up to $2 billion per year from the President's carbon-based mechanism strategy. This model excludes 1.7 million hectares of title land to Amerindian communities and 10 million hectares which are utilized to preserve biodiversity. We need to protect forests such as ours in a way which doesn't just rely on our national desire to help the world, sincere as that may be. In the future, we need to recognize forest economic value to the world and create market-based mechanisms which outcompete the activities which currently drive economic value to the nation. However, President Jack Dio notes that it will take time for capital markets to develop at a full scale. Should Guyana be remunerated for its efforts, the President says government will have a responsibility to ensure that the money is spent on environmentally sound and financially prudent developmental initiatives. The head of state has also noted the importance of strengthening national institutions in light of the large flows of money which will be generated rated in and out of the country. So it is vital that we carefully improve our policies and institutions if remuneration for climate services emerges over time. There will also be many technical issues that will require much work, such as ensuring that monitoring and verification of forest protection is in accordance with internationally validated standards or ensuring mechanisms to ensure permanence where we cannot receive payments for a time only to then cut down forests in the future. President Jack Dio has also highlighted the importance of stakeholder input, namely those of the opposition parties and Amerindian communities in Guyana's representation at the climate change talks in Copenhagen next year. The Guyanese leader will be departing for Poland next Tuesday, where he will be presenting his report on avoided deforestation to the United Nations Climate Change Convention. Reporting for the 6 o'clock news, I'm Shardilal. Thank you, Sharda. Muslims countrywide have celebrated Eid al-Adha, <clears throat> the day of sacrifice with early morning prayers and the slaughter of animals, a yearly custom. The day of sacrifice means giving back some of what you've earned for the year while ensuring a third is contributed to the poor. Nicole Telford has more. Muslims countrywide are today celebrating the day of Qurbani. At the Muslim Youth Organization in Wilford Avenue, Imam Aji Shaheed Mohammed said, all Muslim express gratitude and thanks to Allah for another year. Everything that we own belongs to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he still gives some back, some part of it to me, we shouldn't make any kind of excuses. But so this is the day whereby, after finishing the killing of the animal, we must make sure that we share the animal in a decent manner, want out for yourself, want out for your friends and neighbors, Make sure the poor get one third of the animal. He added that the poor is always recognized during this time, and the Imam believes that Muslims will be rewarded for this gesture. The, the, the reward of doing these things, not only be happy and safe for spending in, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's way, but the reward, you will see it. Allah says, when you die and come back to me, you see all these things waiting for you in your record, your book of deeds. Hundreds of Muslims from around Georgetown and its environs today prayed before the ritual of slaughtering the animal was performed. And like usual, the beef was shared to those in attendance. Eid ul Adha, or the Festival of Sacrifice, is a religious festival celebrated by Muslims worldwide in commemoration of the willingness of Abraham to sacrifice his son as an act of obedience to God. But as Abraham was about to sacrifice his son, God intervened and instead provided a lamb as a sacrifice. Today, all over the world, Muslims who have the means to sacrifice an animal as a reminder of Abraham's obedience to God. The meat is then shared out with family, friends, Muslims or non-Muslims, as well as the poor members of the community. Nicole Telford, NCN, 6 o'clock news.